Thank you. The question is that Amendment 1493.1 in the name of Liz Smith, which seeks to amend Motion 13493 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a business programme, be agreed and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 13493.1 in the name of Liz Smith is yes, 55, no, 56. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. The next question is that motion 13493 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a business programme be agreed. Are we all agreed? Can I just confirm we are all agreed? Yes. Thank you. The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 13494 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau on a stage one extension for a bill. Any member who wishes to speak to the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Jamie Hepburn to move the motion. Move, presenting officer. Thank you, Minister. No member has asked to speak to the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 13494 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau motion 13495 on approval of an SSI. And I ask Jamie Hepburn, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, to move the motion. Move, presiding officer. Thank you, Minister. And I call on Finlay Carson. Up to three minutes, Mr Carson. Thank you, President Officer. This uh, motion relates to an SSI, the Sea Fisheries Remote Electronic Monitoring and Regulation of Scallop Fishing, Scotland Regulations 2024. My colleagues on these benches agree in principle to the introduction of REM and on the general policy objectives, but while the majority of the Rural Affairs and Island Committee agreed to recommend to the Parliament that it be approved, my colleagues and I have, have concerned about the detail or indeed the lack of detail in the instrument. Uh, the fishing industry stakeholders who responded to the Rural Affairs and Islands Committee call for views expressed concerns that REM would predominantly be used as a tool for compliance and enforcement. The Scottish Pelagic Fishermen's Association questioned why another layer of complex and expensive control and enforcement is required for this sector and stated, and I quote, this is not an industry with a short-term perspective. The long-term objective is to maintain a prosperous and sustainable industry well into the future. In order to achieve that, we need healthy fish stocks and a robust control and enforcement regime which is already in place. The Scottish Fishermen's Federation argued that the Scottish Government has not set out clearly or identified the exact problem which REM is being introduced to solve. And it said, REM is not a silver bullet solution to anything. If the fisheries management policies that are in place are not practicable or, un, or are difficult or impossible to comply with, then REM is simply setting up fishermen to fail. 
Fear remains about there being a level playing field when Scottish vessels fish out with, out with Scottish waters, uh, which we would still require them to use REM, whereas other vessels currently not. Professor James Harrison, SIFT, Open Seas and the Scottish Fishermen's Federation questioned why the technical specifications would be provided in separate documents rather than being included in the SSI, highlighting concerns around the lack of scope for parliamentary scrutiny. In its written evidence, SFF stated that the government is giving itself the power to introduce the technical specifications with no scrutiny and also the power to change the technical requirements from time to time with no evident legal obligation to consult those who will be impacted and who will be required to spend more money, another blank cheque to meet any amended or new requirements. In committee, Rachel Hamilton stated, and I quote, I am very concerned about the SSI, the clarity of the technical specifications and the BRIA. The financial considerations that have been presented in the BRIA do not give fishermen confidence. The requirement will cost the sector a lot more than is anticipated and the resource for Marine Scotland and the compliance officers will be significant. I am not sure about the policy direction with regards to the science and data collection. It seems to me that the only process is purely about compliance with a smokescreen around science and data collection to support fishermen and the marine area. We believe that the Marine Directorate currently is, uh, is current resources are insufficient to achieve the objectives of the REM other than to be a blunt enforcement tool. Presiding officer, given these concerns, along with others relating to REM malfunction, to potential fines and data processing, we will not support the instrument, which sadly is yet another example of this SNP government's fa failure to understand Scotland's fishery industry as so clearly Must shown include, in continual stream of flawed uh, legislation. I urge MSPs not to support this motion. Thank you. And I call on Jim Fraley to respond up to three minutes, Minister. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I welcome the opportunity to speak to the Chamber regarding the introduction of this SSI, which will mandate the use of remote electronic monitoring on board scallop, dredge and pelagic vessels. Scotland is leading the way, and we already know that others are following, with planned rollout of REM in other parts of the UK and the EU. Only recently, the UK Government confirmed its own plans to deploy REM on board key parts of the English fishing fleet, starting with pelagic boats. We are working in partnership with others to share our learning and to ensure the REM rollout goes smoothly. This is an exciting new technology, representing a step change in how we deliver sustainable fisheries management in Scotland. And Scotland's fishing industry has always been at the forefront of innovation and technology. Our fishing industry must be celebrated and supported, but it should also be appropriately regulated. A well-regulated fishing industry benefits us all. It assures that fishing takes place in a sustainable way. On the 1st of May, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Affairs, Land Reform and the Islands gave a detailed evidence to the RAI Committee regarding the introduction of REM. The robust line of questioning from the Committee is representative of the diverse range of views held by stakeholders and it reflected the consultation feedback that we received. The support and documentation that accompanies the SSI set out the benefits to be gleaned from REM. This includes the ability to deter non-compliance with fisheries regulations. REM will also enhance our understanding of fisheries, support a robust scientific evidence base, and it will deliver confidence and accountability in the activities of fishing vessels at sea. We have heard directly from retailers in response to multiple fisheries consultations that they support REM and want greater trust in fishing activities. REM will help deliver increased confidence for these retailers and consumers. Based on calls from the fishing industry, we have already deployed REM to the, scallop, the Scottish Scallop Dredge Fleet on a voluntary basis. The scallop industry has recognised themselves the reputational benefits that can flow from REM. The regulations have been developed in a proportionate way following a full public consultation, for example, ensuring a level playing field and taking a pragmatic approach to dealing with technical faults, providing flexibility to fishers where possible, but also avoiding undermining the policy intent. We want REM to succeed and for the fishing industry to succeed, and this legislation will help to ensure that happens by improving standards across the board. I urge members to approve these regulations into law. Thank you. The question on this motion will be put at decision time, and I ask oh, the next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau Motion 13496 on approval of Statement of Principles, and I ask Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau to move the motion. Move, President Officer. Thank you, Minister. And the question on this motion, too, will be put at decision time. And there are ten questions to be put as a result of today's business. 
The first is that Amendment 13480.3 in the name of Fiona Hislop, which seeks to amend Motion 13480 in the name of Graham Simpson on improving Scotland's roads, be agreed. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote. Can I just ask members to refresh their voting app beforehand and for members to proceed after that to cast their votes? Thank you. The vote is closed. I call Michelle Thompson for a point of order. Uh, lost its, the app lost its connection and I wasn't able to cast a vote. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms Thompson. We'll ensure that is recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 13480.3 in the name of Fiona Hislop is yes, 56, no, 55. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore agreed. The next question is that amendment 13480.2 in the name of Alec Rowley, which seeks to amend motion 13480 in the name of Graham Simpson on improving Scotland's roads, be agreed. Are we all agreed? The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The result of the vote on amendment number 13480.2 in the name of Alec Rowley, 
is yes, 56, no, 56. There were no abstentions. The vote is tied, and as is usual when the Parliament has not been able to reach a decision, I am obliged to exercise a casting vote, and I will not make a decision for the Parliament. The established convention is to vote in favour of the status quo as the Chair is required to act impartially. Therefore, I cast my vote against the amendment, and the amendment is therefore not agreed to. And the next question is that motion 13480 in the name of Graeme Simpson as amended on improving Scotland's roads be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we will move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. Point of order, Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. My app would not connect. Uh, I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr Mountain. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on motion 13480 in the name of Graeme Simpson as amended is yes 57, no 55. There were no abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. And can I remind members that if the amendment in the name of Mary McCallan is agreed to, the amendments in the name of Sarah Boyack, Patrick Harvey and Liam MacArthur will fall. The next question is that Amendment 13482.4 in the name of Mary McAllen, which seeks to amend Motion 13482 in the name of Douglas Lumsden, on recognising the contribution of Scotland's oil and gas industry, be agreed? Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we move to a vote, and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. I call Edward Mountain for a point of order. Presiding officer, I'm having trouble with my phone uh, and couldn't connect. I would have voted no. Thank you, Mr Mountain. We'll ensure that's recorded.
The result of the vote on amendment number 13482.4 in the name of Mary McAllen is yes, 56, no, 56. No there were no abstentions. The vote is tied, and as the established convention is to vote in favour of the status quo, I cast my vote against the amendment, and the amendment is therefore not agreed to. Therefore, the next question is on the amendment in the name of Sarah Boyack, and can I remind members that if the amendment in the name of Sarah Boyack is agreed to, the amendment in the name of Liam MacArthur will fall. So the question is that amendment 1348.2.1 in the name of Sarah Boyack, which seeks to amend motion 13482 in the name of Douglas Lumsden on recognising the contribution of Scotland's oil and gas industry be agreed and members should... Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We will therefore move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 13482.1 in the name of Sarah Boyack is yes, 19, no, 94. There was one abstention. The amendment is therefore not agreed. So you don't have to worry about Liam yet because Liam could still fall if Patrick wasn't agreed to. The Patrick's agreed to Liam still fall, so you just go straight to Patrick's okay. then. I remind members that if the amendment in the name of Patrick Harvey is agreed to, the amendment in the name of Lee MacArthur will fall. And the next question is that amendment 13482.2 in the name of Patrick Harvey, which seeks to amend motion 13482 in the name of Douglas Lumsden on recognising the contribution of Scotland's oil and gas industry, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. I call Angela Constance for a point of order.
My apologies, my apologies, presiding officer. Connection to the app and my phone was lost and I would have voted uh, no in the amendment uh, point two one three four eight two point two. Thank you, Ms Constance. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on amendment number 13482.2 in the name of Patrick Harvey is yes, 19, no, 94. Sorry. Sorry. There was one abstention. Bear with me, colleagues. The result of the vote on amendment number 13482.2 in the name of Patrick Harvey is yes, 7. No, 107. There were no abstentions. The amendment is therefore not agreed. And the next question is that amendment 13482.3 in the name of Liam MacArthur which seeks to amend motion 13482 in the name of Douglas Lumsden on recognising the contribution of Scotland's oil and gas industry be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. The result of the vote on amendment number 13482.3 in the name of Liam MacArthur is yes, 79, no, 34. There was one abstention. The amendment is therefore agreed. And the next question is that motion 13482 in the name of Douglas Lumsden, as amended, on recognising the contribution of Scotland's oil and gas industry, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Can I just confirm, are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now.
The vote is closed. The result of the vote on motion 1342 in the name of Douglas Lumsden as amended is yes 106, no 7. There were no abstentions. The motion as amended is therefore agreed. The next question is that motion 13495 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau on approval of an SSI be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The Parliament is not agreed, therefore we'll move to a vote and members should cast their votes now. The vote is closed. I call Katie Clark for a point of order. I would have voted yes. Thank you, Ms. Clark. We'll ensure that's recorded. The result of the vote on motion 13495 in the name of Jamie Hepburn is yes, 85. There were no votes against. There were 27 abstentions. The motion is therefore agreed. And the final question is that motion 13496 in the name of Jamie Hepburn on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau on approval of statement of principles be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. And that concludes decision time. And we'll now move on to members' business in the name of Kevin Stewart.